Oh man. Okay, yeah, there you are. Okay. I'm gonna have to go get Cynthia. tuned into my weekly talk radio TV show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced and get happy with Dr. Marissa. And this show is about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal. (laughs) Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. So I have shows and topics... Monday, Tuesday, happy days, Wednesday, Thursday, happy days, Friday, whatever, happy days, what a day, I love you, I love you too, (laughs) best known as the mom from Happy Days, and she is a delightful 89 year young Marion Ross to my studio, welcome, welcome, welcome. Dr. Marissa, <laughs> this is such a treat for me. Oh. My goodness, you're a wonderment. Which is exactly the kind of guest that I like. Those who have gone through life, good and bad, and then taken those experiences to alchemize them into the person they are now and doing good on the planet. I'd like you to welcome Corey Feldman. If you're grateful for it and you say right away, thank you, God. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. I'm so blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then guess what? More good things will come to you. Does this sound familiar at all? She's back again to mark my Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month show. Please welcome Fran Drescher. Hi, Fran. Supporting Cancer Schmanz. I really appreciate it. So what would you say are some of the biggest myths, Fran, that people have about cancer? Well, I would say that they think that there's a cure for it. (laughs) Okay. Instead of a cause for it. is the first call-in show when I get to be Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura. And uh, people call in to get their life tires balanced and their critical thinking or their BS, their belief systems, smog checked. And today I am delighted to have Malie calling in from Birmingham, Alabama. We could go 90 days and end up having terrible sex. And then you say, well, the relationship's not all about sex. Well, if I'm not getting great sex from you, then I'm going to get it from somebody else. Right? That moose just got put on the table. (laughs) 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 And I see Josh and... Jim, I have to agree you're with both nodding, nodding, nodding. Ramon's sort of half nodding because his wife's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I understood what was going to happen if I, Muhammad Ali's youngest daughter, made public that I was going to become a boxer. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to make sure this was the path that I wanted to go down. You are absolutely fabulous, beautiful inside and out. And I'm giving you Dr. Mercer's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award today. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto... 
Don't Die Wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome. You are tuned in to my advice. I'm not using the good balance with Dr. Marissa. The morning show with Cynthia Kahi. Good morning. <laughs> For Fired Up Fridays, and we are on CNBC News, NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Audible, Amazon Music, Tiki Live, Rumble, GeoSan, Podchaser, Spreaker, and more. Why so many places? Because we, hashtag positively opinionated hosts, want to splatter as much hope and happiness all over because there's so much bad news out there that, of course, we want to balance it out with some good news. So we have topics and guests to that end. As I mentioned, it is Friday, and you'll always know it's Friday when you see not just one positively opinionated host, but two. And it is my fabulous, wonderful co-host, Cynthia Kahi. Welcome back to my show. And I just love just in time, just in time. It's all good. I actually, what happened was I sent you a link earlier than I normally do. And so yeah. that, that's because Polly didn't see it either. But anyways, <laughs> you got here right Made on it. time. Made <laughs> it. Should be my middle name. Made it. <laughs> right on that's time. That's good. Cynthia made it Kahi. I like it. I like it. Um, uh, so where are we? Yeah, I'm getting everything ready because, um, I get to go be with my mom. She's in the hospital in Toronto and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, it's, you know, everything happens for a good reason. And, uh, she's been battling Parkinson's for a while and then she fell, broke a couple ribs, collapsed mm -hmm. half a lung got fluid in it, pneumonia, then her chest tube drainage got infected, sepsis. Mm -hmm. But the good news is she's actually getting better. Um, so they're evaluating her for palliative care. And it's just one of those things that happens, the circle of life. And mm -hmm. so in my efforts to prepare everything to be gone and still broadcast live for the next 10 days, that's why I sent you the link early. <laughs> So, yeah, so pa Polly's like, I don't have the link. I said, yeah, you do. I sent it early. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so glad. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's 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 all me. And, and um, you know, I think that that's why uh, I suggested the topic for a change, because this is real life. And if we were to have a subtitle to Fired Up Fridays, it would be real talk with uh, Cynthia and Dr. Marissa because we're keeping it real. And uh, this is what happens, especially not knocking guys, but most women tend to take on the additional career stuff on top of the stuff that they normally are, you know, traditionally done for uh, the, the, the caretaking, oh, the caretaking, the, um, oh crap. Uh, <laughs> my Facebook is, sorry, did I say, uh, oh crud, I guess that's not any, anything either, but, uh, we are not live streaming yet on the time. What time is it? Cause they oh, only allow, okay. So this might, uh, we're going to be late on Facebook. Oh, well, hopefully everybody is on, um, my YouTube channel anyways. That's okay. the link. That's the link that I send to everybody. Okay, good, good, good. I don't good, know. Good. I don't know that my mom has ever jumped on, but I send. <laughs> but I send it to. I send it to my mom. Um, I send it to a couple of people. Uh, a couple of people really like it, so I appreciate the support. Um, one of them is my good friend David, and he was um, feeling ill, so I uh, wish him the best and speedy oh. recovery, and he is, but he even texted me this morning. I asked him how he was doing. He's doing well. He had COVID. You know, I, oh. yeah, but he's fine. I mean, he's good. So he likes he likes our banter. He likes our dynamic. Uh, Gene also likes our dynamic, so I appreciate. Uh, yeah. 
my friends. That's, pop nice. that's awesome. That's nice. Um, so let's get started with breakfast. Are you ready for yes. breakfast? Are you hungry? Breakfast. I am definitely hungry for <laughs> gratitude because when I'm feeling uh, off kilter or off center, this is definitely the first go-to tool that I use is gratitude. And it's also how I love to start my shows in the morning to start you uh, and exercise your yeah. muscle of gratitude because it is a very important one for you to have a happy life. So here we go. Go ahead and start. I am grateful for you, Dr. Marissa. I am very grateful for you. I, you know, know we met on a whim and I think it is an amazing um, adventure of friendship and we are learning each other and I love it. So thank you. Aw, love you too. I'm grateful for you uh, for stepping in and uh, I just really love our natural repartee and and also you know i have not uh had people share my platform because i thought that uh it would be um not useful to have someone who didn't necessarily agree with me on all things. And the great <laughs> thing is, is that's not true. And that the, we are good examples of how we can disagree with each other and still be alive and still be friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially during this time where it's so easy to unfriend or, you know, and, and I think that's a really good dynamic. So I'm grateful for that. I am grateful that we have this platform so that we can teach people that. I was talking to somebody last night and I love what I do. I share because I want somebody else to say, oh my gosh, I feel the same way. Or, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this platform. So thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. There's David. Good morning. Good morning, David. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, I am grateful. What are we on? Number three for me. So we're on number six. I am grateful for... Hmm. I'm grateful that I got my passport. Oh. OMG. It was expiring in October. I sent it in June. I wanted to do a name change because I had left my husband's name on it because it was just easier to travel with my kids who have his last name. And so I sent it in, sent in the divorce decree from eons ago. And uh, they sent me the same name back, the hyphenated um, name. And so I sent it back. They said I didn't have the right thing. And then my mom gets in the hospital. Mm. And so I had to go through this whole rigmarole of, you know, doctor's letter saying she's not going to, may not make it so that, you know, and at that time that was true and uh, drove to San Diego to an hours one way get to the window and they go oh we just mailed your passport you should get in the mail today <laughs> i'm like okay i'm happy that you did that <laughs> but is was there a reason why yesterday when i was on the phone nobody told me <laughs> <laughs> you needed a nice drive to san diego yeah yes paid you know and and uh i'm chinese uh, and i'm not stereotyping but i I got also from my dad, you know, I just paid two hours parking. So I sat down in their lobby and worked. <laughs> well, you needed a break from driving. You needed a break from driving, right? True. Because I put my back out for the third time in my life. So driving oh, that's five right. hours was Are you better? not, yeah, I was not good. pleasant. So anyways, good. but the good news is if I hadn't gotten it, Apparently, I would have had to stay in San Diego till like they start printing passports at two o'clock. So anybody who's making an appointment, make That's it like close to two as possible. You're going to be stuck unless you go and visit the sites. So, so that's my long gratitude. That'll take two. So you have what you you have two more. I'm done with that one. <laughs> Where is it? Well. I am grateful for amazing friends who support me, like David, who's on here, like Jean, Aww. like and Wendy. They yeah. are amazing, and I, I am super grateful for them. Beautiful. For a lot of things. But uh, <laughs> well, our topic today is going to be part of that, so that's amazing. So, Awesome. Grateful. And the bottom of the bun, 
those of you who are tuning in for the first time and you're wondering who this nice over, she smiles more than I do. It's my co-host for Fired Up Fridays, Cynthia Cahey. And we are doing our breakfast gratitude sandwich. We're now at the bottom of the bun, which is eight things that you appreciate about yourself. Cynthia, you go. Oh, Lord. Um, I appreciate how optimistic I am. It is difficult. It is difficult. And, you know, again, with our topic today, there are a lot of things. So I am grateful for that. I appreciate that about myself. I appreciate that I am resilient. Mm. I appreciate that I have learned how to build my grit. It is a routine. It's something that I do. And I appreciate that about myself because I give that to myself. I appreciate that I know how to appreciate myself. <laughs> that's good. It's that's a hard that's a hard one too. That's a hard one. Um, I appreciate my gift of gab. I appreciate that in this you know in this business and what we do. And here I am now, and look at you know where it's gone. So I appreciate that I can do that. <laughs> I. <laughs> Very good. I, that's a new one. I appreciate that I'm very shy. But I'm bump. Sarcasm is another service I offer. So uh, those are my two. I, I'm shy and sarcastic. Um, Your last one. I appreciate that I am kind. Mm. And you are. And what that is it, up? folks, for your breakfast with Dr. Marissa and Cynthia Kahi. Thank you for taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. And hopefully that sustains you. Actually, the appreciation do tonight before you go to bed. And if you haven't done your gratitudes with us, please do when you're done with the show. Go and either write it out or talk to someone. Getting a gratitude partner in the morning is also a really good idea. And mm. that'll be my first tool. Uh, and I'll say it and then, but I do want to go back and qualify. So uh, the tool is, and this is for any mom who is back at school and taking her kids to school or dad, sorry, or dad who's taking, has driving uh, kids and even carpooling when it's your turn to drive. I started this uh, when the kids were like four and six in the middle of the divorce so that we had a mammaly, that's my single mom's version of family, discipline, so a habit that we did every single morning when we got in the car. And that is start driving. What are you grateful for? Three things. And then when they got a little older, what do you appreciate about yourself, your mom, and your sister? And that was how we went to school. And all the people that carpooled with us, I embarrassed the crap out of my daughters because I made them do it too. So there's your tool for how do you find balance in the midst of chaos is to establish some disciplines or habits that center you and distract you from all the things going on. So. Uh, I know that last week when we talked, you had uh, one of your staff, uh, her water broke at the <laughs> restaurant. You had a leak from some kind of a pipe. Uh, and Cynthia is a uh, uh, restaurant owner, and we're going to uh, see a cute little commercial that she put together. And so she, she's also a mom of how many? Three lovely ladies. Three lovely ladies aged? 17, 14, and 12. And uh, so restaurant owner, entrepreneur, mom, what other hats do you wear? I'm qualifying you and you can qualify me so that people know that we just, this is not our main gig. So right. we don't, we have lots of stuff going on just like most women I know and, and men, this show is for you too. However, I wanted really to um, highlight and acknowledge the extra special chaos 
that working single moms go through. So that's, this show is for you. All right, go ahead. What else do you have going on? Um, I am an author. I've written the book. I have uh, done everything that I can to help people with self-development, whether it's coaching, whether it's accountability. I have been on several podcasts and my latest, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word. Project, Endeavor. The latest project is a journal called The Consistency Maker. That is almost ready. It should be out by my birthday. And of course, you know, I have the restaurant. I'm a restaurant owner bringing our product to market. It is called The Knuckleball. And I have a lot of hats to wear, just like you said. But yeah. And you, the three, you know, as a mom, you cook, you clean, you oh. uh, uh, get- She's not to clean. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm allergic to cleaning myself. <laughs> You, well, you, you, all the stuff with raising kids, getting mm -hmm. them places, driving them places, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting them clothes, fed, entertainment, school. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, what else did I miss in just the, because you have kids at home still. So what else? Yeah, is I there? mean, sports, sports is big. Um, you know, taking what, up time now sports? they're all kind of. Well, now they're all kind of getting their own life. Also, you know, friends, they want to go over here. They want to go over there. They want to do this. They want to do that. Uh, Big Sister helps a lot. Lily is the oldest and she is amazing. Um, sports. Frankie plays. She's the youngest. She's 12. She plays basketball. Allison is the middle. She plays soccer. And Lily is my oldest and she plays softball. Awesome. So, yes. So uh, what are other things that can go wrong that can bring that chaos in. And while you're thinking of those to share, I'll qualify uh, past what, what I did already. Uh, my kids, beautiful kids are in San Francisco, so I don't have them in the house. So I don't have to worry about that anymore, mm -hmm. but you know, I love to talk to them and, you know, hear what's going on in their lives. So we have that connection and just even fitting that in with my schedule uh, so, um, we try to make dates to talk. Uh, I, this show is one job. I have six jobs. This show, um, the coaching that you mentioned, happiness coaching, law of attraction coaching. Uh, I do on site, on location, uh, news reporting. I do motivational speaking. I do, um, consulting as an organizational psychologist and I teach Tai Chi on the beach and I write. So that's seven jobs. So, so that's my world. Right. And I, the reason I, uh, it sounds like I'm bragging and the Chinese part of me is going to defend myself because you're not supposed to do that. The nail that stands up is hammered down. But I say that because with every hat you put on, you now expand yourself to a level of chaos <laughs> <laughs> that that it, it is not just separate, they interact as well. And when you do that, the more things can go right and the mm -hmm. more things can go wrong. And, and so there's my tool of understanding and being okay with 80% uh, success in things going as you plan and 20% shift happens. So when shift happens, that is, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't smack me as bad because it's 20% of the time I am acknowledging and okay. I don't like it, <laughs> but when shift happens, once in a while, it doesn't throw me into a tizzy. And the reason why I bring this up is if I do let it bother me and I overreact or have a knee-jerk reaction, I become a co-creator of more chaos. And that's the law of attraction teaching that I'm trying to bring in right now is that if I can't roll with it, I attract more of it. So I, you will rarely, if ever, catch me saying, um, um, it can't get any worse than this. Well, yeah, <laughs> don't ever say that. 
I, de- I don't because it's like the universe hears, oh, it's bad. You like that. You want more. Not that it's a punishing universe, but that's the law of attraction. It's not personal. Whatever you focus on comes more, right? So it's very important to me to say, oh, okay, this is my 20% of the time shift happening, shiitake happening, and right. okay, okay, right. that's that's the problem. Let's go for the solution. Well, I believe in all of those things as well. I did go live on Instagram, so thank you all for joining. I've got uh, some wonderful friends who are joining us, and I think, you know, partly what you said, chaos is relative, right? Right. Chaos is your understanding, your perspective. What is chaos to you? If you create part of your chaos by feeding into something that happens. I spilled my coffee this morning (laughs) on my way here, getting into the car. And I thought, oh, that's nice. (laughs) Most people, most people. And I laughed at myself. I laughed at myself because I was like, Eh, it's okay. I have a good story to tell. The gift of gab, right? So when you say you can help create your chaos, I also learned, I don't know, a year or so ago that the universe does not hear the word can't or don't. So when you put that in a sentence, the universe doesn't hear that and it tells you exactly or gives you exactly what you're asking for it not to do. So one of the things that I focus on and that I tell pretty much everybody that I know is tell me what you do want. Don't tell me what you don't want. One night we were going out and I said, I don't want to do this. And then I said, I was talking to the other person. I said, why didn't you catch me? Why didn't you tell me? (laughs) Don't say what you don't want. Say what you do want. So I flipped the sentence and I said, I want to do this. And it's interesting because, again, you're kind of creating your own chaos, right? It's relative to each person and it's how you handle it. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. It is crazy how much control you actually have over your chaos, over your life, over your decisions, over your emotions that people think are absolutely just out of their control. Yeah, for sure. You are more powerful than you know. Yeah. You can do hard things, somebody said, that I know. (laughs) You can do hard things. (laughs) So I just requested to join. So if you can add me on there and then I can share. And um, absolutely 100% agree with uh, everything that you just said. With that tool, it's so important how we react. And just to qualify further with all the things that I do professionally, Some of you who just tuned in and didn't hear the first part is my mom's in the hospital. I was planning on flying uh, to Toronto next month to give her an 88th birthday party. And you know how important 88 is. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, fell. And so she's in the hospital now. And and, um, now she's stable, but it was critical. They thought she wasn't going to last the night on Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning. And I FaceTimed her and was able to tell her everything that I wanted to tell her if I was there Mm -hmm. before she passed. And um, she didn't pass, but I'm really glad that I got that chance. Even though every time I go, I go like two or three times a year and spend a couple of weeks with her, uh, I was, um, I was absolutely glad that I got to say all those things. But again, this is my life. I can't control that my mother falls or that uh, she has Parkinson's or that she, you know, (laughs) it was funny when I, when I uh, called and the doctor said, um, or sorry, the nurse said, uh, your mother just hit me again. And I went, you know, my mom's like super frail. <laughs> and she goes, Do you, does she have a history of being combative? And I'm like, 
No, strong-minded and stubborn, but not combative. <laughs> and and uh, and uh, what had happened was they tried to put a catheter in her, and she's very religious, and so that that area is shameful, and so she was very upset with them. And I'm going to sue the hospital. <laughs> and so so I explained the trauma of the first time she was in the hospital, like uh, two weeks ago. But anyways, I say this because. That had to fit in to the sh all the things that I, you know, had to have this conversation and then go do a show, <laughs> right? And, 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 you know, I cried an hour and a half. I, I called my niece who uh, is, it, has worked in palliative care for a long time, you know, just talked to her because I couldn't get a, a ticket to go see her because of my um, passport problems and, all of these things I could not control were heavy on my mind. And I had to really reach deep to, for my own tools, even though the name of my show is Take My Advice. I'm not using it. I had to use my own advice and mm -hmm. say, okay, um, the Dalai Lama says, if there's a problem and there's a solution, there's nothing to worry about. So the problem is I can't get to see her. She's on her way out. Um, uh, and then the dolly. So there is no solution here. I've done everything I can to get the passport. Above. And then Dalai Lama also says, if there's a problem and there's no solution, there's nothing to worry about. And that, that statement keeps me grounded in uh, the truth that I can choose happiness. So even when it looks like all heaven is breaking loose and all of these things are happening and none of them I want to have happen, nobody wants your, you know, mother to fall or your mother to die or your parents to die, but it's going to happen eventually, a circle of life. Um, nobody wants your kids to have accidents. Uh, in, in the three weeks, it'll be the four-year anniversary when my daughter I got that call from the sheriff in North, uh, North uh, uh, New York State that my daughter had rolled her Jeep at 2.30 in the morning coming back from a concert and broke her neck and her wrist. So that happens, and she's totally fine. It was a miracle. That's another story for another day. But I can remember that moment. I made one text to my big brother, Michael Bernard Beckwith, and he says, you know, I got you covered. And then I made just stayed in the, all I need to do is get to New York. That's all I, she was at Cornell. All I need to do is get to New York and nothing else matters. And I'm not going to go into the, what if I'm not going to Google, you know, if you have a symptom or something, don't Google it. <laughs> so, so this is the bliss of plan. How do you find balance in chaos? You stand in your middle and just deal with what's in front of you and right. don't go to worst case scenario. Do not go into uh, paranoia, go into pronoia. What's the best thing that can happen here? And I went to the hospital and I said, you know, we know that her, she has a neck fracture and I'm not going to go worst case scenario, paralysis, blah, blah. I'm just going to say, we'll see what the doctor says. We'll see what the doctor says. And as simple as that sounds, it is a true discipline. And it doesn't come overnight. It's not a light switch. But if you're one who is rocked by bad things that happen to you, this is a good tool right. for you. I agree. Blissipline. I never, I've never heard that. So that's a new one. That's great. And, you know. It's not mine. It's Michael's. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I have to it's, give him credit. Dr. I'm Michael me. Bernard Beckwith. And we always, you know, we always learn things from somebody else. We can, we can change things and we can make our own, which I think is really, really important. But one of the things that I always do, and especially right now, there is a little um, tilt in life, right? For me with all of the things that are happening, but I always center myself on what can I do? I've never heard that from the Dalai Lama also about if there aren't any solutions, then everything is also going to be okay. I always, always, always say, 
what are my options? There has got to be something that we can do, I can do, depending on the situation. Even if it is just getting rooted in your gratitude, because when we were talking about um, the topic for today and, you know, when your world is falling apart around you was one of the things that we were, we were, you know, uh, tossing back and forth. And I was like, your world doesn't really crumble around you. Like you have a perception of what's happening. Again, it's that discipline, which I really like now, <laughs> is you're training your brain. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on all of those, whether they're little or whether they're big, things that are happening that are on the negative side? Or are you concentrating and putting your focus and your energy on those things that either could be or that what you can do and all of those things for your actual um mind to wander to the positive, the bliss of it, the things that you can do. Gratitude, I um, I heard one time is alchemy. So it's something that you actually produce in your body. And it is, it is a, it is an amazing tool. And if somebody on this show has never done gratitude, I would like to encourage you, you have got to do gratitude. It changed my life. Absolutely. 1000% changed my life. So yeah. I do it sometimes in the morning. I did it last night. I did it last night. You can do it twice. You can do it when I honestly, I do it when I have one of those moments where I'm like, okay, well, this is happening and this is happening. And maybe sometimes it's the feeling of overwhelm that there are too many things because of all of the hats that we wear, right? Maybe it's that feeling of, okay, I've had enough. Like I'm pretty much at the top here. I'm, I'm feeling a little way down, right? So in order to bring myself back up, and give myself that mindset, I do the gratitude. It creates that alchemy. And then I have that next level where I can actually see the, what was it? Bliss for me? No. Is that right? The what? The bliss of planet? Bliss of planet. Bliss of planet. I got to write that down. Uh, <laughs> I really yeah. like it. I just, I just put the credit. Um, hold on. Did I put that comment up? Uh, Colette Tracy just said uh, uh, she also enjoys discipline. Here's the credit. Oh, I like that. It goes to uh, my big brother, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, founder of uh, Agape International Spiritual Center, Oprah awesome. 100 Lister. And he's the guy who actually introduced me to Oprah as the Asian Oprah. Ah. So. Very so cool. uh, if you've just tuned in and wondering who you're listening to this morning, it is Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa and Cynthia Kahi. And it is Fired Up Fridays. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, you're going to hear more tools for how to find balance in the midst of chaos and what do you do when everything around you is falling apart. Hopefully you've enjoyed some of the tools that we've already talked about. We're actually streaming live on Instagram. It's so nice seeing all those hearts go by. I just love that. Please don't let me stop you. <laughs> But I'm so grateful that we have multiple uh, places to stream and be uh, appreciated. So here we go. Uh, come back because uh, you're here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. <laughs>
awesome. All right. And one more commercial. This is a special one. Where's the applause? See if you can catch it. <laughs> With the button. <laughs> yes, please bring me back in. Take back your life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa and Cynthia Kahi here on NBC News, CNBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and more, including my YouTube channel, where if you free subscribe on Dr. Marissa Pay, pay like money, but it's actually spelt P-E-I, like Prince Edward Island, then you'll get an <laughs> alert every weekday morning for a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time. And Fridays are very special. Newest series that's come out of this show. It's Fired Up Fridays. Up stands for you, hashtag UP, unlimited possibilities. And my fabulous co host is Cynthia Kahi, who's here with me. And we are also streaming live on Instagram, Doc Balance for me, Cynthia Kahi for Cynthia, and on YouTube and Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. So, welcome to all my new LinkedIn people. Jennifer Perry is uh, loving this valuable and uplifting discussion. Shia, shia. Thank you for your uh, beautiful, encouraging comment. And we're going to continue answering this question. What do you do when everything around you is falling apart? Otherwise known as, how do you find balance in the middle of chaos? Cynthia, what were your thoughts during the break? Oh, nice commercial, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I wanted to add something. You had said um, when you got the news about your mom, and you took some time and you cried for an hour and a half. And one of those things that I think that uh, the world has created for us is speed. Right now, everybody wants things to be fast. Everybody wants to go to the top instead of John Maxwell says, you don't go to the top, you grow to the top, right? You have to take these steps. And I believe that one of the steps for um, finding balance in chaos is to actually have a little self-compassion. Love yourself through it. If you need to cry because something is really upsetting or sad, do it. It is one of those things. It is an outlet for ourselves. It is something that actually makes us feel better. I heard something that I'm going to share, and I know that you have your UPS man. <laughs> I go to church. Um, I'm a Christ follower. And I heard recently, and this is brand new for me. This is brand new for me. I, um, I'm spiritual and my spiritual journey only started about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And one day at church, I heard that when you cry, God hears your tears. And so it's, it's an interesting thing to me because all my life, I always said, I think my tear ducts are broken because I don't cry. And so it was a strength thing for me not to cry. And so I'm sharing this because I think it's really important. It's a release. It's an outlet. And I never really felt the full, and I know joy sounds weird, but there is a, a release that comes when you cry and you just get it out and you, it, it takes that out of you. So it's part of self-compassion. And I think that it's really, really important that we give our, ourselves time to do that. Then there's the flip side where I say, 
you, if you uh, consistently do that, then you train your brain that that is what, you know what I mean? If you do yeah. it and you set just a time to do that, then you say, okay, now this is what I have to do. This is how, you know, I'm doing this part of it. If you have to go back and do it again later, that's fine. But my point is, you know, you are self-aware and you are self-compassionate. Thank you. Shish, yeah, I, I received that compliment. And I actually came up with a saying that's used a lot, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, it's called tears are the disinfectant that keep Aww. your heart soft. And that came out of my work when the Seal Beach Salon shooting happened. Uh, I was in the library and I became mm. known as a grief expert. And I did some commentary whenever tragedy would happen on the news. And I, and I love, and I think I got you to cry one time on the show, maybe early on. I'm not sure, but I love when people cry, uh, whether I'm working with them, coaching or just there, because not just tears are the disinfectant that keep crying. And I'm not like an ogre and like sadistic and want you to cry. But when people cry with me, that means their hearts are open. And, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that you have discovered that you it's okay to cry. Because here's the model that I use. People think that, um, you know, emotions, right? The spectrum of emotions. You've got ecstasy, exhilaration, joy, yeah, up here. And then down here is depression, sadness, anxiety, worry, um, um, envy, all the low vibrating, but it's, and, and you're told, you know, don't feel sad. Don't be mad. All of those things, especially women. So you think you cut down that bottom half, but what happens is it works like a dumb waiter. You know, those dumb waiter elevator doors, it goes like this. So if you cut out all of those negative things and not allow yourself to cry, then your ability to feel joy and ecstasy, as you were saying, also goes away. So this is the range of emotions get switched. And that's why we have so many people walking around going, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. So fine is right here. And fine stands for effed up irrational, neurotic, and emotional. So we don't want people walking around. I'm fine. Right. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Like, or I'm not angry. So <laughs> a little bit of self unawareness and a little bit of self denial. So we want ourselves in this time of craziness, allow yourself. I mean, if shift happens, I take 16 seconds to use the most graphic swear words that you, when I'm alone, that you've ever heard, like I make stuff up because I know in those 16 seconds, I can safely, fully release my negative energy and negative energy takes way more volume than positive energy. And if you do not release that negative energy, it will eat you up and get infected like George Costanza's father on that episode of Seinfeld <laughs> when he started the show and threw out the show, serenity now, serenity. And the worst things got serenity now. And by the end of the show, he popped, right? A lot of us do that. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Rah! Right. And then he like used a bat on like a million dollars worth of uh, 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 computer equipment. So sorry. That's okay. You know what? I think you had an amazing point that it took me a while to understand, and that is release. It will build up and it will outweigh the good. So to release in a way that you are comfortable. Some people cry. Some people don't. Some people hit things. Some people go to the gym. Some people go for a run. It clears out what's in there. So being self-aware and self-compassionate, you have to find what works for you and what is the best release for that negative energy. And one of those things for me is gratitude. Sometimes I do. I, I feel like in the inside of me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to go to the gym. Like I have, I've got to lift some weights. <laughs> I do a lot of push-ups. <laughs> I'm like, let me just do some push-ups really quick. It changes my whole um, 
my whole demeanor. It, cha- it, it, it releases those endorphins. It pushes me through. It gets me to release some of that negative energy. Um, and so when you learn what works for you, if you have to scream into a pillow, if you have to say 15 seconds or 30 seconds worth of, worth of the worst swear words you could ever come up with, It's great, but do what works for you. And the reason why I love to share and I appreciate this space is because somebody might say, oh my goodness, I never knew that. Um, One more last thing, because it's super easy. If you haven't learned yet what your outlet is, um, Brendan Burchard in the book, High Performance Habits, if you haven't read it, it's amazing. One of the things that he teaches is when you shift, like for us as women, and we're doing all of the things, restaurant owner, mom, author, so on, so forth. When you go from this dynamic and who I am as a restaurant owner, going and leaving here and going to my home life, I say in the car, you give yourself 30 seconds and you're releasing everything that happened at the restaurant so that you don't take it in as the mom and to your children. So I've learned to just take that time and veg or decompress or say those words, release, release. And you just, you kind of feel it actually release from you. And it's super cool. Very easy. You could breathe during that time and really just Inhale and then exhale it out and just release what was happening or what you just came from as you go into the next uh, phase portion of your day. It's a really, really easy, simple tool. You just have to take the time to do it. Mm-hmm. And a lot Great of times point. those tools we don't we don't know about. We just keep going like we always used to do. So that's why I love to share. And I appreciate, I appreciate you, Dr. Marissa and this platform and um, Instagram and we're on LinkedIn. I love it. So thank you. You're welcome again. That was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it, it, we're having great interaction here. Colette says, uh, I don't stop myself from crying anymore. Uh, John Bap- uh, Baptiste, Jean Niabizi. Nia Sorry if I'm butchering that. He's uh, he's hailing in from Africa. And mm-hmm. I actually interviewed a friend of his uh, from Jesse's place, Frederick, whose ha- arms were cut off in the Rwandan genocide. And it's a great interview. If you haven't seen it, go to my YouTube channel and just put in Dr. Marissa and Frederick. Uh, so uh, talking about, um, you know, <laughs> how to live with that chaos and uh, the important role of forgiveness, but that's a whole nother topic. I don't want to open up necessarily today, Mm -hmm. but uh, just to tag on to your gratitude, Dr. Wayne Dyer, the late, great, beautiful man, he actually uh, was my first teacher about gratitude. He said, if you start your gratitude, if you start your day with five gratitudes, you will, you will change your life. And so I'm an overachiever sometimes recovering. So I say eight. That's why our gratitude sandwich does eight. Eight's a homophone for good fortune in Mandarin, Chinese. I know you thought I was Swedish, but I'm actually Chinese. And that's why we do eight. And then the other thing that I wanted to tag on is, uh, did I, oh yeah, breath. So taking that breath, you're absolutely a thousand percent. We're not disagreeing today at all. I can see a hundred percent, uh, uh, agree with you or eight, 88, 880% agree with you. And I actually made the breath into a three breath technology when I started teaching the Tai Chi and realizing that the first breath, and and if you could do this with me now, everybody that's everywhere and just Mm -hmm. humor me for a second. And Cynthia, you can help me model this. You, you take a breath in through your nose, the first breath, and release through your mouth, soft shoulders, soft elbows, soft knees, and just re- relaxing your body. You're connecting to the physical realm with that first breath. Second breath in, and releasing all the stories and the drama in your head, just Feel them come out of you, and that's activating 
the mind. So we've now activated the body with the breath, the mind with the breath, and then the third breath. Release. Making the connection with everyone on the planet as well as that power outside of yourself that you call Christ or Jesus and I call my UPS man, universal power source, who delivers every morning when I pray and meditate. And when you do that third breath, you're connecting. And if you can do that and you feel your fingers tingling, if you do this enough, what's happening is you're unblocking all of those things, the mind thoughts, the BS, the belief systems that keep you separate from that connection and all the knots in your body because you're holding your breath waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so many of us, the chaos was five years ago, but we're still holding all of those places afraid that it's going to happen again. If your heart got broken or if something bad happened, if somebody died, you're still holding all of that and the breath technology, the three breath technology, if you practice that, it begins to unblock you. And of course, the Tai Chi practice, Balance Tai Chi Gong, which uh, I teach if you're in Southern California every last Saturday of the month. But I do have a download that helps with that release. And I'll give one away as the Asian Oprah giveaway today. Go to drmarissa.life and put in breath and I'll send you a download of that practice. So the breath is another tool as you introduced, and I'm just mm -hmm. tagging on that, the three breath technology, because you could actually consciously take mm -hmm. those three breaths and get yourself in your center. Right, right. We are more powerful than we know. You have everything you need inside of you and if there's one thing that I can share, it is you are more powerful than you know. You're just, most of the time we just haven't realized our potential, what we can do. That's why I think it is so important to learn every day. Every day I learn and every day I get better, growing in some way. This show, I hope that somebody learned something new today and it absolutely we're go in perfect timing because we got to go out. I'm getting the signal. I so hope that you have enjoyed. We'll be back this combo next Friday again. I'll be streaming from. Toronto. And I just know that you have learned something and that you're going to go forth and have the best day or best weekend ever. This is Dr. Marissa reporting from my loving room, reminding you it's all about balance. Here we go. Peace in, peace out, world peace through, inner peace. See you on Monday with Colette Tracy, Real Talk. Hope you have the best weekend ever. Thank you.